Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is candy and it is a hard little problem. So unfortunately the label is hard but I don't certainly believe that this is a hard problem. We have seen this problem at many many places. This is a repeated problem and I would uh, rather assume it that it is a medium level problem. So the problem basically says that there are n children standing in a line and each children is assigned, is assigned a rating value given in the integer array ratings. Right. So we have been given a integer array. Now each child must receive at least one candy and each child with having a greater rating than its neighbors gets more candies than the neighbors. Right. These are the two conditions that the first one is that there should be at least one candy with each child and all the children having greater rating than their neighbors it can be either the left neighbor or the right neighbor should get more candies than the neighbor and we have to return the minimum number of candies that we need to have in order to satisfy these two conditions. So the problem is very very simple uh, you can assume it like uh, for example this is an array we are, we are taking the example of this particular case where it is let me just duplicate it as well. So first of all we have 1, 0 and 2 these are the ratings of the uh, students or the children. Now uh, the first condition to satisfy the first condition I put at least one candy to them respectively right. So I have just labeled 1, 1, 1 as the number of candies. So let us say this is number of candies right. Now I see that I am going from left to right and for each child I am checking their left neighbor. So for the current child I see whether it is greater then it is left neighbor or not right. Since this value is not greater and 0 is less than 1 I do not need to do anything. Now I move on to the next child. So the next one is this one and I check whether it is greater than the previous one or not. I see that 2 is greater than 0 that means this particular child should get more candies than the child left to it. The left person has one candy so it needs at least 2 candies that is 1 plus 1. Now I will have to take the maximum of both of the values. So the first value is this one 1 plus 1 where did it come from? It came from this particular value plus 1 and now I have also have to consider the current number of candies the child has. So it might also be the case that I need at least this number of candies but the current child, current child already has more number of candies than it. So I will have to take the maximum of the both the values. Since the maximum in this particular case is coming out to be 2, so this value becomes 2, right. So now I have completed all the elements in my traversal from left to right. I do the same going from right to left. This time I am going to check the right neighbor. So I come to this particular element, I check whether it is greater than its right neighbor or not. Since this value is not greater, I am not going to do anything. Now. I come to this particular element, I check whether it is greater than its right neighbor or not. Since 1 is greater than 0, I need, I know for sure that this person or this particular child has got 1 candies. So now this child at the index 0 should it get at least 1 plus 1 candies. And again, I will have to take the maximum of two values. The first value is the new value that I have got or this is the minimum number of candies that he should, that he should get. And this is the current number of candies that the child currently has. When I take the maximum of the two, this value will also become two as well, right? So you see the total number of candies I need to spend here in this particular case is five. That is the summation of all the candies that I have given, right? Now, similarly, if we consider the next, next case as well, so we have one, two, two. Initially, I distribute one, one, one candies to all of them, right? Now I see that this particular element is greater than the previous element, so I upgrade this particular value. Right. Again, I see that this particular element is not greater, it is actually equal, so I am not going to do anything to the last value. Now I go from right to left, so I check whether it is greater, it is not, so I am not going to do anything. Again, 1 is smaller than 2, that means again I am not going to do anything and if I take the summation of all the values, so here you see, I am going to take 2 plus 1 plus 1. Right. Now let us take one more example. So I am just uh, trying to build some example to show you the case when the maximum value will be actually of use. So let us say this is uh, something like uh, this, right. So the test case is something like this and let us say I initially give one candies to all of them. 
Now going from left to right, I see that this particular element is greater than the previous one. So this becomes 2. Now this 3 is greater than 2. That means the number of candies it should get is maximum of 2 plus 1 comma 1. Right. 1 is the current number of candies it has and 2 plus 1 is the new number of candies that it should at least get. So it, it also becomes 3. Now since this 2 is smaller than 3 that means nothing is going to happen. Now 1 is smaller than 2 as well so nothing is going to happen. Now going from right to left what I will see is 2 is greater than 1 that means it deserves at least 2 candies. Right. Now 3 is greater than 2 now you will see yeah, I am going to take maximum of 2 comma 1, 2 plus 1 comma 3. So it is actually 3 in both of the cases. That is why I can keep it to be 3. Now what if only 1 was here? Let us say only 1 was here. Right. So what will happen? When I go from right to left, I see that it is greater than the uh, element on the right of it. So I will have to take the maximum of 2, oh, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 comma 3. So in this case it is maximum of 2 comma 3 and you see I have to take 3. It says that according to the condition I see that the right child is smaller. I need some number of candies greater than what this child currently has. So I take 1 and add 1 to it. This is the minimum number of candies that I need. But this particular child already has 3 candies. So I have to take the maximum of them and I will have to consider that value 3. Right. So this is the only thing that you need to know in order to solve this particular problem. And uh, if you solve it this way, then you will get the correct answer. So you just have to go from left to right once and then right to left. I have tried to ex explain you different cases so that you understand this problem properly. And now if I show you the code, so you can see that uh, I created a vector of answer. So this is basically going to store the number of candies each child has been given. Now it is of size n and the default value is 1. Now I am just going to make a forward loop starting from index 1. If ratings of i is greater than the previous rating, that is ratings of i minus 1. In that particular case, I am going to set my answer of i as maximum of answer of i comma answer of i minus 1 plus 1. Right. So my current rating is greater than the rating of the child to the left of it. So that is why I am going to consider the number of candies the left child has plus 1 because I need more candies than the previous child. Similarly, I start from index m minus 2 and I make a reverse for loop till greater than minus 1. If the current rating is greater than the next rating, that means I am going to update my answer of i as maximum of answer of i, comma answer of i plus 1 plus 1. Right. Now, I am just going to return the sum of all the values in the answer vector and uh, this accumulate function basically will traverse through the whole vector and give me the sum with the starting value 0. Right. So my initial sum will be 0 and it will add the sum of all the values in this particular range. This is what the accumulate function does in C++. You could have also written a simple for loop to add all the values. That is absolutely fine as well. This is just one line to do that particular thing in C++. Right. So that is it for this particular video. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So you see pass all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution which you guys said then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.